Right in the beginning of our Parsha, Parsha Shoftim, Hashem gives us the mitzvah to obey the rabbinical courts in each generation, and not to stray from their instructions at all, even Yemin Usmoil, to the right or to the left. The Talmud interprets this unusual expression as follows, Afilu oimrim l'cha yemin shu smoil, val smoil shu yemin. Even if they tell you that right is left and left is right, you must absolutely listen to the rabbis. What is the meaning of this? Are we really supposed to listen to a rabbi when he tells us something that is blatantly and obviously so wrong? To appreciate the answer, let's first address a better and more fundamental question. Why do we go to rabbis and leaders for guidance in the first place? After all, they're just as human, and in many cases, no smarter than we are. What can they possibly offer us that we don't already know? I believe what we really want from them is another perspective. It's easy to get wrapped up in our approach and our way of thinking. We decide what is right and what is left, and we get stuck on it. So what we really want from the rabbis and leaders is to free us of our one-sided mindset, to show us another way of looking at things so our judgment isn't clouded. Have you ever noticed that when you face someone and talk to them, your right hand is facing their left and your left hand is facing their right? That's the metaphor. When you seek advice from someone, they may see things in a completely different way. They may tell you what you perceive as right is really left and what you perceive as left is really right. So the mitzvah is to be open to that, to listen to them even when it runs against our own perception, our own judgment. Yaakov was a baby who was born with a serious medical issue. The prognosis was very grim, but thanks to the selfless dedication of the hospital staff, he ultimately survived. Yaakov's father went to his Rebbe and told him he wanted advice on what to buy as a gift for the nursing staff. Should I buy them chocolates, balloons, flowers? The rabbi said, listen to me. Forget the sweets and other things. Every so often, bring Yaakov back to the ward and let the staff see what they accomplished with their self-sacrifice. And that's what he did. Every year, he paraded Lily Yaakov around the hospital and thanked the nurses again and again. Before his 13th birthday, Yaakov and his father personally delivered a bar mitzvah invitation to everyone there. Soon afterward, he got a letter of thanks from the administrator. She wrote, and I'm quoting verbatim, after a child leaves our care, we have little or no idea what ever became of our supreme efforts. I wasn't even at the hospital when your son Yaakov was treated here, but you should know that when we train for our difficult and often thankless task, your son has become the poster child of what's really possible. We mention again and again that every infant in our care can ultimately turn out to be like Yaakov. And then she added the following postscript. Many people do send us flowers, balloons, and candies. However, the flowers eventually wilt, the balloons deflate, and the candies are quickly eaten up. But the gift that you have given us has been valuable beyond comparison. This was the wisdom of the rabbi. Yaakov's father was stuck on his version of what appreciation looks like. By changing his perspective, by looking at what the other person may appreciate, his impact was so much greater. Wishing you and yours a Shabbat Shalom and